You are joining Making a Difference with Melissa Clark, a new show that shares the compelling stories and voices of well-known and everyday people who change the world in big and small ways. Enjoy our guests. Call in or just listen to be inspired. For this show was made with you in mind. Please join us every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with our special guests. And you can listen to our recast at www.melissaclarkshow.com. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us here on Making a Difference. Happy Saturday. I hope everybody had a fantastic week. I know that I did. Uh, we have such a special show today. It's going to focus on health care and self-care. But first, I have beautiful Dr. Caroline Whitney. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for asking. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Whitney comes from Memphis, Tennessee. She is a patient-preferred pediatrician. She has over three decades of experience in her field and has been rated a five-star physician by her patients and many family and uh, families that she's treated over the years. Uh, Dr. Whitney is a humble and, ca and compassionate doctor. I've been talking to her for about two weeks now, and uh, she's just a wonderful woman. I'm so happy to have you on, Dr. Whitney. Um, she's been recognized uh, amongst the top 100 patient preferred physicians of 2019 and was recently featured on the cover of Preferred Health Magazine. We're so excited to have you. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I am. How, how is it in Memphis, Tennessee right now? Overcast. How's everything? It's overcast. <laughs> it's an overcast? <laughs> it's overcast and raining all day, yes. But otherwise, beautiful otherwise uh, are they starting to open uh stores over there or has um we have gradually started open you know beauty salons thank god from i had to go to one but uh we had to we opened beauty shops nail shops and some restaurants and some fine retails wow i'm gonna have to head over to memphis tennessee to get my nails done <laughs> oh yeah it's a slow process. We're doing phases through one, two, and three. So that's how very, we're Very good. Very good. Just uh, be safe, and, uh, and we're just so happy to have you here. I just want to show the cover of uh, your magazine. We were so happy to have you on the cover. Um, how does it feel to know that you're recognized by your peers and your patients? It's a wonderful feeling because as a doctor, you know, it's a labor of love, but it also can be a thankless job. Yeah. And there's no greater praise than you have your colleagues, your family, your your comrades think highly of you and with, with how you're a preferred physician. I love it. Now, looking at your career, um, when did you first know that you wanted to become a doctor? When I was 12. When you were 12? Uh, I was 12. Uh, I've been taking care of babies for 50 years. My mother was a neighborhood babysitter. And we would take care of the kids and, and watch them grow and nurture them and feed them. But my most definitive uh, thought about being a doctor would occur with my twin. I have an identical twin. She was 16 mm -hmm. and she was hospitalized and she had this severe abdominal pain and vomiting. And I knew that my sister was sick. Mm -hmm. And so my sister re was, you know, had to be readmitted and had to have an appendectomy. Oh my God. So. So, can you can you explain? <laughs> an appendectomy is just when you remove the appendix. Oh, she had to remove appendicitis. The... I know. Yes. Oh, okay. You you say the doctor term. I'll say the layman's term. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm no, that's to... okay. That's okay. So she had an append. Okay, so she had her appendix removed, and how is she? Is she how is she? Oh, she's, oh, she's fine. She's fine, but. I realized there was something wrong and I told the doctor that and because I was a 16 year old, mm -hmm. they didn't pay attention to me. They didn't. Wow. What were her symptoms that she was having? She had, she had fever, vomiting, lethargy where she was weak, uh, severe abdominal pain. And uh, it just radiated right at that right side and wouldn't get better. And she was just sick. She wouldn't eat. 
she couldn't sleep. All she could do is vomit and have wow. be in pain. Yeah. Wow. That's insane. Oh my God. I'm glad that she's okay because you can actually, how, how severe is that when you have appendicitis? I remember my mother had it and if it wasn't taken care of at the right time, she could have perished. They it. said, yeah, correct. It ruptures and it's not really the rupture, but the, the release of all that toxic pus and inflammation into the system can inflame the entire abdominal area and just, just cause havoc and gangrene almost. So it's really dangerous. Wow. Really dangerous. Do we, we don't need our appendix. Is that right, Dr. Whitney? Oh, yes, we do. We, we need do. everything that God gave us. <laughs> we do need it, but it's not as, you know, as necessary as like your heart, your lungs, your toes, your head. But everything God gave us has a purpose. It's just that it's one of those things that we can live without and function well. Okay. And can you explain to us what the function of the appendix is? Please. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of like part of the lower intestines. Mm -hmm. And then some parts, some people say it helps to get rid of, you know, fecal matter and things like that. That's why a lot of fecal matter gets in, inflamed in there and trapped in there. And that's what causes problems. Wow. So but you, it helps with the lower intestines. Mm. How is it to be a twin, by the way? What's the best part of, about being a twin? It's like, it's like having your best friend from birth. Oh. And you're identical. Yeah. Correct. We are. So when yeah. you're identical, are you in the same sack? Is that correct? Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. But fraternal, they're in two different sacks. Do right. I have that right? Right. Okay. right. It's a little less in that, you know, maybe people are interested to know. <laughs> well, with, with identical twins, the sperm mm. splits the egg directly down the middle. But with mm -hmm. fraternal, you have two different eggs that are fertilized by po possibly two different sperms. So, right. There's a difference. I love it. And you're a pediatrician. Correct. And how does it feel to work with uh, children? I love it. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you're going to cry and whine and act like a baby, you might as well be one. So I can deal with children. I cannot deal with whining, complaining adults. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So children are wonderful. You, they watch you and they understand and they question mm -hmm. and they trust and they teach you honesty. That's right. Because children would, children would just tell you the truth, but they like you, they like you, and they don't. And a lot of my babies don't like me when they first come in. And I said, Mom, just wait two years. She'll be my best buddy. And they usually turn around. I usually just love them to death. <laughs> so they turn around. But so children you, are wonderful. Mm, so you're with these children from, are you with them from birth until they become Correct. an adolescent? Wow. Right. And uh, when I first started practicing, I was a hospitalist before it was popular. Mm -hmm. And I was in the delivery room with all, a lot of the children, and I saw them before their mothers saw them. So yeah. I have special bonds with those children. And I just, I would just remember them when they come to visit me and say, oh, I remember when you were in the hospital and your leg was turned funny. And I remember this. And they say, you remember that? I say, yeah. <laughs> but it's wonderful. You get a little legacy with them. Mm. I, I love it. And now, what, uh, what, in, what advice would you give to somebody who wants to get into medicine now? Because that seems like it's going to be a hot thing with what's going on now. So a lot of um, students are going to want to get into science and medicine. What advice would you give to somebody? I would always tell them, do it for the passion and the love and not the money. Medicine is a beautiful field, mm -hmm. but can also be cold and tiring and thankless. You have to love people. You can't love money. You have to love and have a passion for the people mm -hmm. in order to listen and diagnose. And I would always tell them, you, when you come into medicine, treat that client as if they were your family member. And you will not be callous, and you will be loving, and you will be considerate. And you're also an instructor as well, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I instruct... Uh, not as many medical students with more FMPs and medical assistants and nursing assistants. And I help them when they're going through clinicals. Mm -hmm. And I find that 
when we go into the rooms and we talk to the clients, I always tell them, don't look at what they come in. Go deeper, go beneath, because a lot of the reasons, the diagnosis they get when they come in are what we call admission tickets. They're just to get their foot in the door, but it could be something actually different. And if you don't take time to interview them, do a great physical and history, that all the tests that you order would be for naught because you're not listening to the client. They're mm -hmm. the best clue to what's going on with them. Always listen to a mom. A mom knows their child. And what do you think the easiest way is for a person to learn when you're teaching them? I think the easiest way for a patient to learn, for of my students to mm -hmm. learn, is when I just say, listen, there's no wrong answers. Let's go in there and let's find out. When they feel free to answer wrong, it's okay. That's the best learning. No one learns on a dictatorship. No one learns when you're frightened. You learn better when it's conducive to learning. We learn to correct in private, not criticize. Correct mm -hmm. in private and praise in public. It's the best way to learn. <laughs> It's the only way to learn because then what happens is, is people get nervous and they end up panicking and then you can't even talk and, and you can't help out the patient. So that's, that's very good advice. Thank you. Um, as of late, we're staying on top of our health and the immune system. Uh, what recommendations would you give to a parent to support their children's immune system? What can they do now? Well, the first thing is proper diet, mm -hmm. proper risk and just love. Children are so frightened because they don't understand this virus. Yeah. But this is a good turning point for parents to spend more time with their children. Both of you learning to eat healthy because you can't run out to these fast food restaurants and all these little hot dogs and McDonald's. But you're sitting down and having home-cooked meals, you're having vegetables, you're drinking water, you're having rest, you're spending time but it's still important for them to have a little bit of sunshine. You have to let them have some sunshine and let them play because they're kids and they mm. need to play. So their immune system needs to, I mean, you know how they say like uh, when you have germs, it's you need good germs in order for your immune system to keep uh, building and getting stronger. So they want to play outside, come home and wash their hands, right? Like just let right. them go out and, let them watch. Yeah, just in their backyard, you know, because you got to observe social distancing. We have mm -hmm. to. And we know kids. Kids are going to touch. Kids are going to kick. Kids going <laughs> to hit. But what we want to do is just let them go outside, get a little that energy out, just a little frustration out. Let them come in, wash their hands. You know, and a lot of times I tell them, wash their little faces because pollen is still in there. You still got to take care of that. But we were old fashioned. We had to wash our face and wash our hands, you know, and a lot of the old fashioned ways we're gonna have to go back to because they were good practices. Yeah. Did you ever think in your profession that you would see this or in your lifetime see this, what uh, this pandemic that's going on? Never. Mm. It really caught us off guard. You know, we've gone through serious things. We've had, you know, H flu, we've had birds flu, we've had Ebola. We have had different things, but not to the extent of this coronavirus, the COVID-19. It's a new creature, it's a new animal. And we really don't know what to do because everything is evolving around it and you're finding new factors and soon as you say, oh, I got it under control. <laughs> yeah. There's something else comes to just knock us off the wagon. So it's uh, as an exercise in patience and learning and an exercise of caring and giving. It's not a time to be selfish. It's a time to help people. I agree. And how, how are you holding up in this pandemic? I, we're, well, in my office, we have restricted hours. Mm -hmm. We are we're doing the PPEs with your gloves and your gowns and your masks. And we have reduced hours and we see the sickest patients maybe at a certain time. And I see my children, the newborns in the morning, so ex mm -hmm. not to expose them to sick or older children. You make accommodations. It makes you more resourceful as a doctor. We do some telehealth. And um, 
But the main thing is we get our patients taken care of. Mm. That's what we Have you had any COVID patients? Not that I know of. We yeah. never know. We yeah. never know. But not that I have, you know, have tested positive. Mm. And how is your staff and uh, your, um, how's your staff handling this as well? Do they come to you? Do they ask you for advice? In terms of COVID-19? Mm. No. <laughs> In terms of personal things? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but not work-related? Yeah. But not COVID, no. Not really. Mm. And when you're not busy treating patients, um, how do you spend your times nowadays? How are you spending your days? Well, I'm cooking more. I'm looking, I'm binge watching Netflix. <laughs> what are you and watching we, on Netflix? What does a, a pediatrician watch on Netflix? I watch everything, you know. <laughs> I, I, I just regular movies I never got a chance to see. Yes. Because I was already so busy. Or And then I'm just, you know, I look at cooking shows. I look at gardening shows. I look at regular movies, you know. And I said, Wow. This is what Netflix is like, because I know people always say Netflix and chill, and I said, what are you talking about? I really don't have time to look at it, because I'm charting, taking care of patients, doing things, mm. but now you can slow down, get a kind of declutter your house, declutter your mind, and, and just go on and do what you have to do. Very nice. And what would you say about the state of the world today, and what are your hopes for um, the future? Do you think we'll go back to where we were? They always talk about a new norm, but uh, what do you think? I feel that the world has finally kind of been on the same level playing ground due to the COVID-19. I think it has either brought out the best of people or has brought out the worst of people. And this is a pandemic that affects everyone, all social classes, races, ethnicity, and it's not a time for politics, it's a mm. time for unity. So I, I think in ways we are becoming u more united, but also in ways it's like a dichotomy as Charles Dickens would say it was the best of times, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. You see the good and the bad and the ugly in people, but there's still hope. You see people gathering together and helping. You see people on the front lines, the doctors, the nurses, the sanitation workers, the teachers, people working in grocery stores. So we're all in camaraderie with each other because we got to get it done. And I, I just hope that we will change and be more patient and have time for our families because we would never go back to, I mean, we may go back to seeing movies and going shopping, but I think the mentality has changed that we're going to start prioritizing what is important and what is not. And what about our mental health? What advice would you give to keep our, um, you know, keep ourselves happy and spiritually happy? The, the best advice I can say mm -hmm. is pray and know that it's going to get better because God is in it. And always have a can I say I always say that always have a connection with God or whoever you feel comfortable with. I'm a strong believer in that. I I know that we can't do this on our own. And um, you know when people just don't believe in anything, it's just what's the point of this whole thing? <laughs> you know what's the point of life when you don't have anything to to believe in? Well, there's a point of life that somebody needs you more than you need you. Yeah. We stop for and taking it off of us because there's a reason for everything that happens in the world. And we're going to learn from this. We're going to learn what to do and what not to do. We're going to have to learn. We're going to have to come out of this stronger. We cannot come out the way we were before because it's going to, it inevitably has made us stronger and it's made us different. And so with mental health, allow yourself to laugh, allow yourself to cry. Give yourself 15 minutes to cry. Don't cry mm -hmm. all day long, but give you a free time. Say, well, today, 15 minutes, I'm going to cry because I lost my job. That's okay. You wipe your face, and then you start looking for a job. Or you do what you can do. You learn a new trade. You learn a new skill. But you don't give up, and you don't lose hope. I love it. That's really great advice. Thank you so much. You're, you're an amazing woman, and I've enjoyed speaking with you these past couple of weeks. And, and so have I. 
you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dr. Whitney, you can find her at her, um, her website is uh, www.regionalonehealth.org. Um, so you can call her as well, 901-515-5800 uh, when, when you need a, a new pediatrician to go to in Memphis, Tennessee. So thank you so much for having us. Thank you for being a part of um, Preferred Health. And, uh, and we look forward to seeing you again. All right. It was so nice talking to you. You be you. careful and be safe. Thank you so much. And we'll talk All soon. Right. All right. Thank you right. again for inviting me. I feel very honored. Well, we're honored to have you. And we thank you so much. You're a beautiful woman. All right. Thank you. Bye, Dr. Whitney. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. And good weekend. Thank you. You too. It's so nice when you have nice doctors that you work with.